Welcome to the Technology and Television Town Hall. Welcome to the Technology and Television Town Hall. I'm Maggie Blackwell from United and the GRF Media and Communications Committee. Today we will have presentations by two experts. Please turn off your cell phones. <laughs> Chuck Holland is our Information Services Director. He has an extensive background, information technology, computerized systems, network infrastructure, communication systems. His goal is to modernize and streamline resident services, enhance internet services, and update our broad broadband infrastructure all to bring us into the wonderland of efficient technology. <laughs> His topics will be high-speed internet, fiber optic network, and satellite technology. This is Paul Ortiz, our television services manager. His background includes producer, on-air talent, videographer, and editor. He's responsible for protection, production and broadcast of over 3,000 hours of programming yearly, plus over 100 commercials. He oversees sales, development, accounts, and customer relations. His topics will be HDTV transmission, studio set design, cable TV programming changes, and new home services, such as whole home DVR. Our program will be in uninterrupted. We welcome questions and comments at the end. Uh, please raise your hand if you want to speak at that time. We will come out to you with a mic. You may write any questions and comments on the cards. You can leave them on the seats or in the plastic boxes in the back or at the exits or on the counters. We want them, we will find them. <laughs> Television viewers, bring your comments and questions to the Community Center front desk. Label it TNT Town Hall. Put your name and manner. All comments will be reviewed. Our staff and committee are seeking resident input on these new and ongoing projects. During the program, please remain seated and keep a lid on liquids and on comments so as not to disturb your neighbors. If you cannot hear, wave your hand and we will get louder. Seatbelts fastened. Here we go. Okay, thank you everybody. Thank you very much for coming out this evening. We're going to uh, cover quite a few topics today, but uh, the, one of the most fortunate things is we're going to add a couple, a couple items to, oh, can't hear me? We're going to add a couple items to the agenda that's, that, we didn't, uh, that we didn't anticipate because we're making some very good progress on a couple different projects. How about now? Can you hear me better? Yes. Okay, great. So again, once again, my name's Chuck Holland. I'm the Information Service Director. I've been uh, working here at Laguna Woods Village for about 18 months. Uh, within that time frame, uh, my team and I, the managers that we have, the technology manager, village television manager, and our cable uh, TV supervisor, uh, have all been able to do an extensive amount of work, analysis, and upgrades to various components of the system, right? So, Louder, please. can everybody hear me back there? Yeah. Okay, okay, great, okay. All right, great. So uh, what I want to do is I have an agenda prepared for you all. And before you start throwing tomatoes at me, let me go ahead and just finish my presentation. And then we'll go ahead and answer, take your questions and answers at the end of the session. We have about a 40-minute program that we plan on uh, delivering to you. Uh, we think it's uh, fun, informative. We like to have a good time. And uh, we hope that you'll enjoy it as well. We have a couple slides, uh, a video and uh, some other materials that will show some photos. So here, without further ado, we'll get right started at this. So people are asking me, what is an information services director? What does this guy do? What is he doing for me, right? So recently what we've had, we've had some, uh, 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 the community is now self-managed. Uh, they did, there's been some extensive reorganization. And information services came out of two different separate groups, information technology and broadband services. 
At one time, those two different departments here at the village were ran by two separate directors. But because of the way the technology is changing so much, we have the old broadband world, when the analog television, the analog phones, and then we have the new world with information technology. Everything's all digital. So what we're trying to do is take information technology, broadband services, and bring it all together with information services. And as you can see here, we were bringing it all together. So that's the whole point of combining those two departments. Okay. So today's, today's discussion, right? We talk a little bit uh, about high-speed internet services. I'm sure that's why many of you are here today to talk about why your internet services is so slow. And I agree, and I'm gonna give you an update on that. Uh, we're also gonna talk about uh, something that Brad Hudson has been talking about since he came on board as the CEO, and that's the e-government transparency. How can we be more transparency to not just our coworkers and people in this building, but how can we be transparent to our board members? How can we be transparent to our, our residents at home watching television or in, in the community? Uh, Brad taught me a very important lesson. You know, Transparency, uh, it's not after the fact. We need to be transparent up front about all the things we're doing so you're informed ahead of time before something happens and then we're transparent after the fact. That, in fact, is not transparency at all. So we're going to show you the system we have in place called Granicus that allow you to be able to go online, watch our, 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 our board meetings live, You'll be able to watch historical board meetings. You'll be able to see agendas and information and comment on agendas before the meeting even happens. So I'll do a demonstration of that for you today. And then uh, my, my favorite, which we kind of added in here, is we have completed the new community website. I think what you're going to find is something that I poured my heart and soul into, blood, sweat, and tears, about a year of fits and starts and numerous different vendors. But I think we found a, a solution that's going to be adequate for this community in ease of use, ease of navigation, speed, and, and more of a um, image-based uh, website than more just the basic long strings of text that you've got to read. So I've got a real exciting presentation for you there as well. And then we're going to talk a little bit about some cable network infrastructure. We know that uh, there's quite a bit of work out, deferred maintenance out there in the field that is inhibiting us from going forward offering new digital solutions like whole home DVR. And then we'll, have, we'll tell, then we'll have Paul give us some village television updates about what we're doing with HD cameras, what we're doing with set, uh, and all the different things we have going on on the third floor here. So high-speed internet services. That's the, every question that somebody's asked me this evening is like, what is going on with internet services? Well, I'm happy to announce that the installation of the equipment, all the, all the head-end equipment, has been replaced. Um, every single router, every single switch, every single laser, every single component of that high-speed internet system has been replaced. Right now what we're doing is we're going through systematically node by node, there's 32 nodes within the whole entire community, and upgrading one uh, node at a time. Right now we have four tiers of service, right? We're starting with the highest tier service and working our way down. So good news is all the hardware installation is completed and we've replaced everything every component that you can possibly think of. So we are talking about earlier about these 32 nodes across the community. People are like, what is a node? What does it do? How come that's important to me? Well, this node is, you've probably seen these pedestals around the neighborhood, and maybe a few of you might even ran into a few, because believe me, because <laughs> believe me, I've seen some of them, I've seen several of them just completely wiped out and replaced. So what we've been able to do is we have these head-end lasers that the, at the fiber optic network, what it does, it shoots a laser beam towards these nodes and then out to your house. What that does, it allows you to get faster download speeds. The faster download speeds are important. Here's why. is because when you want to stream your Netflix, your Hulu, you want to do your web surfing, your Skype, your video presentations, very, very important that you have fast download speeds. So we'll get into the details of what fast really means. Is it high speed? Is it slow speed? We'll find out. Okay, this is the high speed. This is the 16 new lasers that we installed. This is at our head end plant. Before we had eight lasers, uh, let's see, 16 lasers. 16 lasers were feeding 32 nodes. So essentially we added 16 more lasers. So now we have 32 lasers feeding 32 nodes. What did that do for us? It doubled our transmission capacity, right? The whole overall band that we're able, we're able to deliver to you the transmission capacity has been doubled, but the actual bandwidth that we're going to be serving to you is triple of what you're used to getting. So if you had a 30 megabit uh, connection, 
you now have a 100 megabit connection, right? So, and I'll go through the details later. So the whole idea of replacing these lasers is to increase the transmission capacity to make it better for you all, right? To get a better level of service. So you know, on, you know, the, you know the challenging time is five o'clock in the afternoon, you're trying to watch Netflix, Everybody in the neighborhood's got Netflix on, and you see the spinning wheel of death, right? buffers and buffers. I know, I get it in my house too. Okay, so we'll talk a little bit about that too. Um, you know, we've got, so although we have all the 32 nodes up, uh, we still have quite a bit of effort uh, to go, right? We know with the replacement of the satellite, the new laser dishes, uh, the, I'm sorry, the, the new lasers, and we know the transmission network is, is very robust and it's very up to date. But the real challenge is, is really out in the field, right? This is the problem that we're running into at your manors. Uh, you see on the left-hand side there, is this is what your lockbox looks like outside your unit. A lot of, the, lot of that cabling is 25, 30 years old. A lot of the, a lot of the, uh, the connectors are corroded and, and rusted. And so what we've been doing in the past, as we get a service call, we send out a technician, they look at one individual unit, they repair the issue, and then they move on. We're trying to change our practices there so when you go out and you see something like that, the technician's gonna make an additional work order, we're gonna spend some additional time, and why not we just fix the whole box L at one time while we have somebody there. That way, because we know if somebody have, is, is having internet issues in one manner of a building, let's say a garden villa, we know probably many other people are probably having the same problem. So we're trying to take a more proactive approach on this maintenance and be able to get out in front of it to start replacing these one at a time. I do believe there's 2,500 of these throughout the community that we're gonna be looking at uh, repairing in the next few years. You can see on the left-hand side is the, uh, the before, the right-hand side is the fantastic work that our awesome cable technicians are doing out there in the field. So this one right here is, this is my favorite one. This, this one right here, uh, there's a couple thousand of these out there in, in the world as well. Kurt Ron, your, your landscape director, called me up a couple months ago. He goes, hey, Chuck, we got a problem. Our irrigation system's not working over at XYZ building. I'm like, what's going on? He goes, I don't know. We can't get it to connect. You got to come out and take a look at it. You, know, if you, you may not know this, but we have a very, uh, very comprehensive irrigation system that it's all ran off radio towers and telephone lines. So I went out there, popped the lid, and promptly you see that debris on the bottom? That was a bird's nest. We had a bird, <laughs> we had a bird living in there. So what we did, once again, we sent our awesome team out in the field, and then what you see on the right-hand side is the more modern digital. Left-hand side's analog, right-hand side's digital. That's the kind of work that we're doing for you out there in the field. But there's thousands of these things. It's gonna take some time, right? High-speed internet, directly to your question earlier. Why is my internet so slow, okay? Right now we have, we have 9,400 subscribers. Out of 12,736 units, we actually have 9,400 subscribers. It's actually 9,300 and some, but we'll just say 9,400. 9, now out of those 9,400 subscribers, there are about 4,000 of them that have a modem that cannot run speeds faster than five megabit. So you need, there, well, there's 4,000 modems out there that need to be replaced. For the folks out there who are paying for the higher tier level service and you have the newer modem, what they call the DOCSIS 3.0, you should be already be getting those speeds. And I got an update recently and we'll tell you, we'll talk a little about that. This right here, we have 3,000 subscribers that are now running the new speeds. Uh, 15 minutes before I walked in here, that number now is 4,138 people are now running the new speeds. So yes, it's taken us a little bit longer to get this project rolling, but we're really rolling fast now. We should be able to have uh, oh, just about 5,500 subscribers running the new speeds here in the next couple of weeks. Keep in mind, we still have about 4,000 of our clients out there that are running on old technology that cannot run the new speeds, okay? It's a big challenge, a lot of work, okay? So the, out, uh, the outdated cable modems are called DOCSIS 2.0. DOCSIS 2.0, it's a 10-year technology. It's no longer being used. It's being faded out. Uh, and we need to go to the next level, which is the DOCSIS 3.0. Okay, so we have 4,000 modems out there that need to be replaced. The modems are $60. The installation fee is $40. So it's about $100 per modem to get them, get them replaced out there. Now, I'm no genius, but I'm thinking if it's $100 per modem and we have 4,000 of them, that's $400,000 that we got to come up with to be able to replace those modems, right? So here's the trick. Who's going to pay for that? Does the resident pay for that? Pay for that? On, it's their service. Maybe they should be one paying for it. Or maybe, or maybe it should be GRF. Maybe we should actually tap GRF and they could pay for it out of reserves. 
but then again, you're paying for it out of your assessments, right? So which way do we want to go? Well, what happens if I told you there's another way we can go about doing it? What happens if I can offer these routers to you at no cost to you or no cost to GRF? How about that? Sound good? Sound like a decent solution? Of course, it's $100, right? West Coast Internet is going to put up $400,000 over the next two years to replace those modems. Here's how. Their contract was going to expire at the end of this year. So we went into some heavy duty negotiations with, uh, with Paul Caranto from West Coast Internet, with Brad Hudson, who was our CEO. And we worked out a deal. It's like, look, we need to be able to figure out, get these speeds up to where they need to be so we're competitive with Cox and Spectrum. But we want to do it in such a way where it's going to be cost effective for our clients. We want triple the speeds at no additional cost to the residents. I didn't go over well. <laughs> Paul didn't like it at all, but we're like, play ball with this. You've been with us for 20 years. We want you to be with us 20 years more. What can you do? So we sharpened up our pencil. We got down to business, and we felt that by extending his contract by two years, that he's going to be able to shell out of his own money $400,000 to replace all these modems. Now, now, hold on. Brad, Brad's like, call up West Coast Internet right away, and you get your free modem. Not really going to work that way. Here's how it's going to work. What we're going to be doing is everybody with the DOCSIS 3.0 modem that we have now, there's about 5,500. We're going to sweep through, hopefully, in the next couple of weeks. Everybody with those newer modems will be running on the new speeds. Okay. Then shortly thereafter, Paul is going to do an outbound campaign to everybody. If you have, he knows if you've got a DOCSIS 2.0 modem on there, and he's going to be informing you. Right. Everybody here who pays for internet services, pay for it online, and we have your email address. So he's going to do an outbound campaign and give you some opportunities for you to be able to get that modem replaced. Okay. Okay. Here's the new speed lineup. It's kind of small. Sorry about that. So what what we used to have on starting on the left hand slide, what we used to have is a, what five megabyte down, uh, five, I'm sorry, yeah, five megabyte down, one megabyte up for twenty three fifty. And that's pretty pathetic, I have to admit. But those folks out there who are, have those old Docs's two point modems, they're stuck at that speed. Sorry, until we get them replaced. So right now, we've taken that, that 15 one on the left-hand side. We've taken that five down, one up, and we've taken it to 15 megabyte down and two up, which essentially is tripling the internet speed. Now, 15 down is not that impressive, is it? Not that impressive at all. But if you're looking from the left going over to the right, looking at the, on the right-hand side, the 100 megabit speed's down, uh, down and 10 up at 4875. That's very competitive that you're, what you're going to see at Cox. It's very competitive at what you're going to see at Time Warner. And it's very competitive at what you're going to see at Spectrum. Okay? So these, and essentially, it is true. The, the, the fee schedule has not changed, and we're tripling the speeds at no additional cost for hardware and no additional cost for, uh, for monthly services. Now, i got a little caveat here. See down there at the bottom? If you need speeds, if you have a Wi-Fi router at home and it's not a wireless N, you can only go up to 54 megabyte connection. So even if you had the 100 megabyte connection, you're not going to get that speed unless you upgrade to the wireless N router. That's the most recent technology that we have for wireless technology. If you have a wireless G router, the fastest you're going to be able to transmit is going to be that 54 megabytes. So keep that in mind. When you're home hitting speed test, speed test, speed test, Right, over and over and over again? Okay, don't do that, please. You're not going to go any faster. By the way, when you do that speed test, it puts a lot of stress on the whole entire network. So maybe do it once a day. Don't do it five times in a row. Okay? Killing me here. All right. So I think, I think that's a good deal. I think well, oh, the biggest challenge that we have, and, oh, by the way, I have to apologize. I meant to start off by apologizing. People are asking me, why has the internet been going up and down lately? Well, here's why. It's because we had to rip apart every single node and rebuild it and put the new components in it. And sometimes when you open something up, it just falls apart. It, sometimes it took two hours. Sometimes it took two days. So as soon as we would have published a schedule and then promptly would have failed on that schedule, then you guys would have called in even more. So what we try doing is just do it as fast and quickly as possible and get the pain point over and move on. Right? That's what we tried doing. So I apologize for that. You should see uh, uh, some, a few interruptions going forward while we're getting the rest of those 5,500 clients up and running. So you see some, some jitters there. If you ever do have any problem where your internet stops responding, just reboot your cable modem. It'll reset it and it'll, it'll, it'll work fine for you. If not, call, call, call West Coast Internet. Okay. All right. 
Hold your questions for internet later and I, I can answer as many as I can. Let's switch over to cable TV network infrastructure upgrades. Uh, I don't know if you guys had a chance to see, but Brad was on television a couple weeks ago and he had some nice video footage of the satellite dish that's going on at Broadband. Have you guys seen it? Anybody see that? If you go to lagunawoodsvillage.com and go to our YouTube channel, you can see a really interesting time elapsed uh, video of the city, the satellite getting installed, right? This is a real high speed, real uh, heavy duty infrastructure project that we need, that we're going on. The existing satellite that's up there um, at the Rossmore Towers building, I think it's off the Rossmore, Rossmore Electric, that tower, uh, it's, it's a GRF property, you own it. Uh, it's 20 years old. Uh, technology has changed so much then that the arc in the sky of these satellites has changed radically. So the new satellite that we have in here has got a wider spectrum that can pick up more signals. It can actually take feeds from like 36 simultaneous satellites at one time. So it's the latest and greatest military grade transmission satellite that you're gonna get that's on the market today. And it's here and you own it and it's installed right now. We've recently just pulled, uh, it's a 6,000 pound satellite and it takes about 4,000 feet of cable to fire that thing up. So our guys, the, the satellite is installed, it's in, it's mounted, it's padded. Our guys now are pulling the cable and terminating it and moving over one channel at a time. Just like that, that's how they're doing it, okay? So let's talk about that. Well, I mean, we know that there's a significant number of upgrades that we need to do uh, to, keep, uh, to keep everything running. The existing cable, oper the cable, uh, cable TV plant is about 20 years old, right? So there's things that you need to do periodically to do maintenance. How about a roof? How about air conditioning, right? All that equipment in there needs to stay cool, right? How about a fire suppression system, right? All that important stuff, right? A new roof, possibly. Uh, so we have to make, we, uh, over time, as part of your assessments, some of that money is earmarked for reserves. So for the past 20 years, you've been saving money for these upgrades uh, for the cable operation, the cable plan, okay? Um, the biggest thing we're working on next, we know we, we've we worked out the lasers at the head end. We're putting the new satellite dish in there. We, we rebuilt all the nodes out there, but now what are we doing next? What are we doing next is we're taking a look at all the cable infrastructure that's going from the plant to the node to your home. Uh, we're a fiber optic network. We have one of the we have a one gig fiber optic network. Help you if I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, Paul. One G network, right? For for television transmission, that goes out fiber optics to the curb of your home. From there, it goes to a pedestal. From there, it goes to coax cable, right? So, fiber to the curb, coax to the home. And you saw some pictures earlier what the state of the coax is, right? Here's a couple of good shots of some of the stuff we need to replace. These are pedestals that are my favorite ones that are throughout the community. The one on the left there, if you guys play golf, that's at the driving range. We had a water event this last year that flooded that area out and kind of tilted it off, off, off to the side. The one over there, when I'm working with the landscape team, they thought it would be a nice idea to mulch that thing. <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to make sure that Kurt and his team, the landscape guys, you don't need to mulch the pedestal. It's okay. It's okay. You don't need to mulch it. Got, we got issues. And that box on the right-hand side, there, that's your head end. That's your cable. That's the main internet feed that comes into the whole entire community. Do you think we can spend a few bucks and replace that? I think so. If not, if we don't do it, who's going to do it, right? Yeah. Anybody know what that is? This is your fiber optic network underwater. Do you think it needs to be like that? Do you think maybe we should have a proactive plan where every six months we have a team of people and engineers come out here take a look at all these nodes, suck out the water, clean out the debris, and reseal them? Probably a good idea. Do you think it's been done in a while? I don't think so. We're changing all that. We're bringing in an independent third-party expert team, uh, one of the nation's premier leaders in broadband networks and cable TV operation. They're coming out here on September 18th, and they're going to partner up with our engineers and our technicians over at the cable plant to do a comprehensive inspection and, and diagnostic of every single component in our system, the cable plant, the nodes, the pedestals, the lockbox. We're going to be able to very swiftly be able to tell you how many different types of buildings we have, how many different node types do we have, how many different pedestals do we have. We're going to sample each individual one, and what they're going to come back, they're going to come back with a scope of work for me to say, hey, Chuck, here's what we need to do to be able to take this thing into the 21st century. Looking forward to that. It's going to be pricey. We don't know yet, but uh, hopefully by the end of the year, uh, at least hopefully by first quarter, we're going to have some, some firm estimates that we're working with the GRF board, the Media and Communication Committee, and the rest of the team. So like I said, we're doing a, heavy, a lot of heavy lifting now with the satellite, with the lasers. 
But until we can actually solve the coax issues on the side of your building and the cable that's inside your home, it's going to be trife. It is what it is, right? If you have issues, call West Coast Internet. If you have issues with television, you're going to call broadband services. So we're going to continue to troubleshoot and support as fast as we can. But the whole overall goal is to get in there and wipe all this out in a couple of years and get it all done right away. At least that's the goal. So that's what I was saying here. Complete system inspection and diagnostic will be underway very, very shortly. What else we got? Ah, yes, the new community website. So talking a little bit earlier about e-government transparency and what that means. The idea is to be able to give everybody here, there's a lot of folks, and thank God you all were able to come down here, but there's some people that probably want to be here, but they can't get it. They can't make it. They couldn't be here. So they're actually watching online right now. And particularly with our board, uh, um, our board meetings, we have a tremendous amount of board and committee meetings here, right? We know that we're, trans we're actually uh, transmitting or, what, what's the right word, Paul? Transmitting our board, we're broadcasting our board meetings uh, right now. There's no intent right now to, to broadcast committee meetings, but the board meetings are being broadcast. But I like to, like to think that we can provide a tool for you so when you know a board meeting's coming up and you can't make it here, that you'll be able to go online, take a look at the meeting, take a look at the agenda before the meeting, and then you're able to make a comment on there. You can go right to an agenda item, make a comment on it, and then when we're here in the meeting, the board members will be able to see your comments in real time, right? They'll be able to see them and address them accordingly. All right, so what I'm gonna do, and if the technology gods bless me, I'll do you a quick demo of what that's gonna look like. Oh, we got internet, that's good. <laughs> Whew, wow, that was close. All right, let's take a look right here. Let's take a look and see what we got here. All right, this is the new community website. We're gonna get into some details earlier, but what we're trying to do is really create a new picturesque, easy to use, easy to navigate solution. But right now, what I'm gonna show you, you can see right now, if you can get your attention, let me see if you see the mouse right down here. Do you see all these navigate, that purple bar down there? We've kind of broken down all the most important components of the entire community into five different selections. Neighborhoods, it's, which includes Third, United, uh, the Towers. The amenities, which includes all the recreation, and uh, clubhouses and the facilities. News, which is all different types of news that you can have there. Calendars, any kind of calendar you can think of, maintenance, lawn, paint, anything that you want to see is on there. And then residents, what we call the what we're calling the residence portal. It's a one-stop shop place that you all can go to get access to information that you need when you need it, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Okay, so we're going to quickly just going to check out that resident page. I can actually give you a demo of the site. It'll probably take a couple hours, but we don't have that time right now. Oh, come on. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you down. We're talking about e-government transparency, and I want to show you the tools that we've created for you. Just quickly, kind of calling our welcome center, our high task items. We've got all the content that you can possibly think of broken out into these different groups. I know it's been really frustrating for me uh, with the existing website that we have out there. Lots of great information out there, but every time I go back to find it, I can never find it. It's not organized in such a way that I can, I can locate it. So uh, believe me, I'm an expert at it after now, after this last year, I'm an expert. But we, what we've been able to do is group everything together in the, these functional uh, groups that we think is going to be very helpful for you. But we'll get into some of those over a while in a second. All your governing boards and the documents that are going to be in here, but really I want to pay attention to is this Granicus, the e-government transparency piece. This is something that we think is really, really important. If you can't make it to a board meeting, you want to watch it, you don't have the ability to see Channel 6 or Village Television, then you're going to be, if you're on a golf course, if you're on vacation, anywhere you want to go, you're going to be able to pull up your smartphone or your tablet and be able to watch board meetings right online. So let's get an example of what that page looks like. Not only are you going to be able to watch board meetings that are up and coming, for instance, this is a committee meeting right now. We're not going to be broadcasting committee meetings, but I'm just using this as an example. So. If, there, if this meeting was going on live right now, it would say in progress, you'd be able to hit a button right here and you'd be able to watch this meeting live right from your smartphone, right from your PC, right from your tablet. If you wanted to see, if you wanted to do an e-comment, I don't think I have a user account here, you'll be able to e-comment on this thing. Look, you'll be able to see the agenda, go down to any agenda item, you'll be able to comment on these items Put your name and information in here. You do, have to have, you do have to give your email address so we know how to get back to you. And if you comment on something, that information shows up at the board meeting so the board, meeting, board members can actually address that. Okay. Let's 
go ahead and close that down. Okay. But if you wanted to see the, uh, then uh, the good news is, is once the meeting is finished, right now I know um, if you go to the YouTube channel, and sometimes it's kind of hard to find those videos. There are lots of videos out there, so I can't never find that exact uh, board meeting that I'm looking for. So let's take a look and see how we have these things organized, right? So now you're going to be able to see not only just all the Golden Rain Foundation meetings, but then you'll be able to see third in United. You're going to be able to drill right down into them. Instead of hunting and pecking on YouTube, you're going to be able to go right to these meetings. And so let's take a look at what it is, what, what we're trying to accomplish here. Uh, let's see, I like this one better. Oh, of course. <laughs> of course. Uh, let's see, I think we got to turn on Flash. Let's see what we can do here. Refresh. Let's see if we can get that going here. There we go. Pesky old flash. So now what you'll be able to do is, uh, it, now you can see the actual agenda that we have here. So you can see, we, instead of loading up a couple hundred page document, what you're going to see here is this a list of the actual agenda itself. If there's something in particular that you want to see, you can actually drill right down into the PDF document and actually see those documents right online. All right. So now I'll be able to see the actual staff reports and all the different materials that go along with the agenda. So you'll be able to see the entire agenda package right online. The real special part of this here, if there's a particular item that I want to see on the agenda, maybe I just want to go right to the CEO report, I can double click on the agenda over here and it will fast forward to the spot in the, in, in the actual board meeting. So I don't have to watch the, three, the whole entire three hour meeting to find what's interesting to me. I can actually log, connect right to the actual agenda item, fast forward the video and be able to display that, right? And particularly if you are, there's a couple different controls here, obviously we can, we can expand that out. You can watch the whole thing. I got it muted right now, but you can see we have our closed captioning and other items that we have here. Uh, but the, uh, the important thing is, if, in particularly if you look at the agenda beforehand and you did an e-comment now on the particular agenda item, now you can actually go to that particular end agenda item after the meeting and you can see if, the, if, your, if your issue has been addressed, right? So what we're looking for is a two-way dialogue. You know, you be able to give the board members feedback and four members, board members are able to give you feedback without having to come all the way down here to, um, to get up on the actual microphone if you don't desire to. So I think that's, that's very powerful technology, very powerful tools. It's something we wanted to really showcase uh, that we have. Let's cruise down here. All right, anyway, sorry about that, guys, okay. So that's what that's all about, okay. I think, like, again, uh, one thing that's really interesting about these particular board meetings that they're now in here, this, uh, just like this tonight, right, this is the first, I think it's the first town hall meeting that we've had in this, in this building, in this room, utilizing the new technology that's here. You can see around the, around the, around the building here, these new uh, high-definition cameras. If you've seen any of the board meetings lately, they actually look pretty good. I know there was kind of a running joke around here about, oh my God, what's going to happen when we go high definition? What are the board members going to look like? <laughs> so it's kind of scary. I thought, wow, it's going to look good. But I have to tell you what, we, uh, we've made some changes on the third floor here. The board members have the option to come in, get dialed up a little bit with just a little bit of touch-up makeup. And when we're on the high definition camera, I have to tell you, I have to say, when they're, when they're on high definition camera and they're dialed up, they, they actually look pretty good. They actually look pretty good. So I'm pretty, pretty stoked about that. So it's good. It's uh, turned out wonderful. And the, as you can tell, the, the, the room is just beautiful. The screenshot. So this is uh, what we're talking about, the, uh, the new community website. So I know this is something that's been in play for a long time. Uh, the idea is to be able to give you a, a place to go to really explore, look at the amenities, uh, connect with neighbors, to be able to look at clubs and classes, see what kind of homes, other homes are, are for sale in the community. So I, what I want to do today and uh, talk a little bit about, okay, when is this new le website coming? Well, I have to tell you, it's two minutes to midnight, right? We have our, our administrative folks and our content administrators slicing and dicing this thing, looking at every single document, every single word. And uh, once they give me the okay, within the next few days, this website is going to be launched. I was hoping to have it launched by tonight, but we're not quite ready. Um, but here's the tricky part. Once we unleash it to the world, meaning all 18,000 of our residents, we're, we know you're going to have a lot of great comments and a lot of great feedbacks. I hate it. You're going to like it. Or you're going to go, wow, this is great. 
Or most importantly, you're gonna say, hey, you know what, Chuck? You got a typo over here. Maybe you should fix that, right? Okay, so this, we want that feedback from you, okay? So let's take a look at some of that website stuff here. Mm -hmm. Let's go back over here. What I wanted to do today is kind of go over a high-level overview of that. Uh, you won't need a password to get into it yet. Is kind of go over the high-level functions that we have for the website. Again, what I mentioned is the uh, that navigation up there. Let's see where we got. Let's shrink that down a little bit. So I can see it. And right now, uh, keep in mind, this is only a, uh, a demo link. You'll, be, you'll still be going to lagunawoodsvillage.com, same exact URL that you're used to. Uh, we know that some people absolutely adore and they love that old site. Don't worry, we're not going to get rid of it. You're going to be able to go over here and hit view classic site, <laughs> and you're going to go be able to go right back to the old site and get back to the old ways of doing things just like you always wanted, okay? <laughs> All right, so a couple different ways we can navigate here. Um, you can navigate through that this navigation bar here, and it can take you to the high level. Or you can actually use what we call this is called a hamburger menu of all things. See how it kind of looks like a hamburger? Mm -hmm. You can drop that menu down. You can see all your different amenities that you have here. Oop. Let me do that. Cruise here. You'll be able to see your amenities. Be able to see all of your. Oops. Sorry, I'm using this crazy mouse pad. All your different neighborhood information, right? All your different resident information. So it's organized very, very simple, very, very, very easy. Once we get, uh, but most everything that you're gonna be able to get, get to and navigate to is gonna be through these guys right here. This is the main navigation point of the whole entire site. Now scrolling down, you can see when I'm up the top, a lot of people, we always say, I can't find anything on the site. So we put this little guy down here, do you see him? He's like, scroll, scroll, scroll. So that way, that way you know how to, that's how you know how to scroll down here like this, right? Okay, so you know you have, and so we broke up content in something interesting. You explore, it takes you to all your amenities. Connect, it connects you to all the clubs and classes. Participate, it's all the events and all the information that's uh, it's about all the performing arts center, so on and so forth. But then we have you know, some nice verbiage here, welcome page. Um, since we didn't really want to bog down the site, especially the mobile uh, devices with a lot of text, we really minimized the text. So if you wanted to see more information about that, you'll see these throughout the site. I can say learn more, and it takes you to different pages about additional information <laughs> about the site, right? You get more information. That's how those work. Uh, one thing that I really want to uh, bring to your attention, though, if you really, really want to explore the site and take your time and go through it and really uh, make this into an adventure, I, I would recommend you go to the site map the, uh, down here at the bottom of the, of the site. And you can systematically go through, every, it's kind of light there, you can systematically go through every single page that we put together for you. We got over 200 uh, pages of content and information that we think it's important to you. So if you're interested in clubs and classes, that's, that's great. If you're interested in real estate, that's great too. If you're interested in uh, clubhouses, we, there's something for everybody. And we're going to go over and see some of that stuff right now. So let's take a look at the top level here we got. We have uh, our neighborhood page. Right, so find your new home, right? You can take a look at information over here. Information by third, information by United, information about the towers. If you're interested in leasing, interested in getting a tour, interested in buying, right? We put this together for our real estate agents because you know real estate agents are actually a real important part of our community here, right? Um, so they, we created a whole page for those guys. All the sales and leasing, anything they can possibly think of, they're gonna be able to have. Another thing you can look at we thought was really neat is if you wanted to see uh, all the various different floor plans. So now only, uh, right now we're, we're, we're re-digitizing all of those floor plans so they're all nice and new. We don't have them launched yet, but they're coming soon. But check out this tool. So if I wanted to find out a property at third that has three bedrooms, that's over a thousand square foot, that has a garage, I'm able to zoom right down there and simplify my search, right? Makes it much easier to look at that, right? So it's kind of really neat feature that we have for you guys. Let's quickly take a look at amenities. I'm running out of time here. So on the amenities side of the house, we have real robust, anything you could possibly think of that you can think of, that you want to be able to visit is right here within one type of, one type of uh, widget or another. Like for instance, you want to find information about clubhouses. All the pages work pretty much the same. 
sometimes you want to find out where a particular clubhouse is and you, and you go to the website, you can't find out where it's at, no problem anymore. You'd be able to go right to the clubhouse one. I know that's not a picture of clubhouse one, by the way. <laughs> but now, but now it's, it's great. It's now it's like a regular mobile app. Now I can click on view if I'm on my smartphone. It's going to take me right to the actual uh, Google map so I can actually find and navigate my way, right? And now we can actually, if you're meeting friends and relatives at the clubhouses, you can give them this website. Now they can actually navigate their way. And if you're on a cell phone, and if I hit that widget right there, I'll be able to call them right away. So we make it real simple for you all to, to be able to navigate stuff. There's just so much information here, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Let me just quickly, I'm gonna show you some real, uh, real cute stuff that I like, turn out really well. Uh, fitness and sports, right? We are showcasing our new, uh, our new gym here, which is really nice. We got our new fitness centers, right? There's just so much to explore here. I can't wait, we can launch this so you guys can all play with it. So just great information about anywhere, anything that you want to get going on in the community. Same thing with news. Any kind of news and event that's going on in the community, you're gonna be able to get it in any kind of way that you like, right? Do you wanna see the Village Breeze, you wanna see all news, you wanna see events, what's up in the village, transportation information, clubs, recreation, that news is there for you. And then uh, calendars as well. Any kind of, the board member calendars, maintenance calendars, landscape calendars, any kind of calendar you can think of, we have it on here for you. Let's take, see if we can find out, right? So we have what we have, all governing boards, United, Mutual 50, Third, GRF, but now, when you want to know when the trash guy is coming out over here, we're going to go maintenance schedule. Maybe it's not the trash guy. But we have street sweeping, elevator improvement, prior to paint, waistline remediation, gutter cleaning, janitorial, uh, you name it. Any kind of uh, schedule that you have on there, it's on there uh, for, you, for your review. So very powerful tool, right? Very cool. All right, and then uh, rolling back to our residence page. There's just so much information to go through here. Right now what we're looking at is these navigations right here, if the contact page, this is really important, contact page, any kind, it drives me crazy when I go to a website and there's no contact information. You can only email them. Well, we know that's an issue. So we have the, all our top level phone numbers that we have. You do have the ability to email them. But then if you wanna be able to view the whole entire phone list, view phone list, and we got everything sorted out by group that you can possibly think of. You wanna go to UTC, let's go to utilities. You, want to, you got a problem with West Coast Internet? I'm, right here we go. West Coast Internet tech support. You got an email address too. I can hit that. Get to them right away. Okay. Uh, and then what we're, we're really exploring this, this how do I, where it's really still kind of a, a, a work in progress here. But what we really want to do is trying to find all those really, really important questions. How do I register my vehicle? Give you a link. How do I get an RFID? Give you a link. So you don't have to go hunt and peck through the site. You can quickly go to your how do I section, find the information that you're looking for, and then move on with your day. The idea with the website, and especially with this community portal, is for you to be able to conduct any kind of business online that you can in resident services. I know there's still a lot of our newer residents are still working. They don't want to have to slip down here on a weekday because they're busy working, right? They want to be able to go online and uh, find the information that they need. Our first, uh, our first rollout here is really going to be all about uh, information, right? But, something, but this is just a work in progress. As time goes on, we're gonna add additional features and functions and capabilities, so you will be able to do any kind of transaction online. Uh, the, two, the two that I can think of off the top of my mind that will be coming next is a, is a homeowner login. It's an area of this website that you'll be able to log into, so you'll be able to see your account balance, see the, rec see the information that you have on file, see what vehicles you have registered, see all the important stuff that's, uh, that's uh, see all the things that are important to you. So if you see a discrepancy, you can let resident services know, hey, my records are outdated. Can you update them for me, please? Okay. Uh, the next thing we're going to be looking at is allowing you to pay your assessments online. Right. Right now, I think the majority of everybody is on auto debit or what we call Easy Pay now. But if you do want to pay by credit card, some people do. Believe it or not, they like the points. Uh, they like they want to be able to set up those reoccurring payments online. So we're we're, we're setting that up for you. And uh, right shortly thereafter that, we're looking at ways for you to be able to buy. Uh, you know, at the Performing Arts Center, there's all these wonderful shows. You actually got to go down to the ticket booth to get a ticket. We're not going to do that anymore. You're going to be able to go right online, look at the events online, and you'll be able to buy tickets right online. So it's coming. It's coming, right? It's just coming, right? Okay. All right, I could get into that all day long, but I'm, I'm, I got to move on here. Okay, what do we got here? 
So check this out. So we have a couple more minutes. I wanna, we're gonna go a little bit long, but I hope you guys don't mind. I got a really interesting video I wanna show you guys. It's a, it's a video, uh, we know we have our own television station here. You know, recently it was TV6, we're rebranding, rebranding it to Village Television, and people are like, why are we doing that? Well, here's why. So now I have TV6, now it's on 6, 6.1, 406, and I think we also have 106. So channel six doesn't really make any sense any longer, especially once we start going over the top and start watching TV through the internet. You're not gonna go to a channel. You're gonna go to village television and you're gonna be able to see this stuff. So we're trying to think towards the future and see how that's gonna, uh, how that's gonna react. Just like when you see the History Channel or Discovery, there's no channel number next to it. It's just Discovery, right? So that's what we're trying to do. So what I, this, this video I'm gonna show you, it's, it's all about what we're, all the things we're trying to do behind the scenes at Village Television to modernize the studio, to, uh, to make it more attractive for y'all to look at, uh, to showcase some of the new talent, some of our new pro uh, program directors, our new producers, uh, showcase some of the talent of our new on-air folks, and to kind of showcase some of the new movies and stuff that we're doing. Um, also, you can see some really interesting uh, footage of our new high-definition uh, remote cameras we have at the Performing Arts Center. Now, from this building, we're actually, our team is shooting uh, uh, programs, shows, if you will, or events from this building at the Performing Arts Center uh, in high definition. So it's actually, actually uh, spectacular. So we're gonna show you right here. So we're gonna show you right here. So I wish I could dim the lights, but. Oh, we got it on mute. Excuse me one second. Please no feedback. Oops. There we go. There we go. Oh boy. Who did that? These things are magic. Good day, Orange County. I'm Amy. And I'm Lauren. And we are so excited about this show today. Welcome back to the show. Thank you. It's good to see you get sweetheart. Welcome back, and we are once again in the kitchen with Amy and Lauren. <laughs> I'm the monkey. See what happened? <laughs> you got closer to the center. Wow, this is great. I've seen amazing changes. for a little tour. We're in the midst of a major transformation of TV6 to the new and improved Village Television, or VTV. Come with us. Let's jump into the future together with Village Television. Who's working, who's working the light? What's going on over here? It's Andre. Oh, Andre. Oh, of course it's Andre, yes. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, the man behind the curtain. This is Paul Ortiz, the vill village manager of television. Good evening, everybody. Uh, another hand for Chuck Hall. and did a great job in his presentation. Uh, he's a very tough act to follow. As you can tell, it's very difficult to get TV time from Chuck because <laughs> he likes right. to talk. But what I do want to ask right now, I just have one question. How many of you know who Philo T. Farnsworth is? Know what? Wow, Philo Farnsworth. You don't know, wow. 90 years ago, he invented the television, if you can believe that. In 50 of those years, you've had a station here for your community, so I think that's pretty remarkable. In 1967, some very smart people said, let's make local television, and we've been supporting that for 50 years now. We're very proud of the station and what we've been able to accomplish. 
We've taken on some very big tasks in the last nine months to a year by converting to HD. We now have HD cameras in your studio. We have HD cameras in the Performing Arts Center. We have HD cameras in Clubhouse 5 now. So we actually remotely control those cameras, and here in the boardroom as well. We control those cameras from upstairs. So that saves you staff time, and it really makes the staff available to do many of the events. Matter of fact, we just did a show for the Democratic Club the other day. The, the speaker basically chastised us for not being there. Yet we were there, and we, and we told them, we're gonna do this remotely, we have equipment, so you're not gonna see anyone, but they forgot, and said, well, we're gonna start anyways because the guys aren't here. So we're gonna, we're gonna edit that part out. So, but I'm just really, I'm really proud of what the station has been able to do lately. If you're watching some of our programming on Village Television lately, you see the quality of the product is a lot better. The content is getting more community related. And one of the biggest things that we're able to accomplish is to work with a lot of the clubs and organizations that are within the community now. The Video Club is a great supporter of your station. You know, Scott Marvel and Tom Nash and Steve Carmen and Lucy Parker and that whole team has been providing content and producing programs that hopefully you're finding interesting. The artist showcase that Scott just did was a wonderful program about Clubhouse 4 and the many people that are utilizing the amenities in this community. So I, I encourage you to turn, tune in and watch that. We have Food, Friends, and Fun with Barbara and Bob Powell. That's a new show that community, again, residents coming forward with talent, with ideas that the staff can help put together. So those are some of the things I'm really excited about that we're doing here on Village Television now. We're also working on a new logo, so you'll be seeing that hopefully in the next couple of months. We've gone through... 30. 30 he's saying 30, it's about 100. Right. It's about 100 revisions of a logo, so hopefully we'll have that for you pretty soon as well. You know, as you saw maybe from the Village Life magazine that was out, we've had many changes over there. We brought on Connie Carroll. She is also uh, our on-air talent. She's helping us with set design. She's also won an Emmy with ABC on Home, uh, Home uh, Extreme Edition that was on when it first premiered. So it's nice to have that kind of talent. I think we're fortunate to have that kind of talent here at the station as well. So she's really added a lot of things to your station. As Chuck mentioned, the TV Guide, we revamped that about six months ago, I believe. And now we're gonna do that again because we've had a request to put on more programming on the weekend. So you'll see this now lay out to seven days instead of five days. And then I hope you get a chance to watch the movies. I hope you've raised your hand, you're watching the movies. Okay. The movies have become very popular. As you know, we are airing them on Mondays and Fridays now. So if you, went out to go see Wonder Woman, or you haven't, I would wait. We're gonna show that in, a couple, in about a month. Uh, Wakefield with Brian Cranston, we'll be showing that to you in just a couple of weeks. So be sure and pick up our, our TV guide where we've been able to bring you first run movies that you cannot get on direct TV pay services yet. You're actually watching them at home for free, and you know hopefully you're watching it at, you know, you know, with your friends or whoever you might be watching with, but we hope you've been enjoying that. So uh, we thank uh, the staff and everybody for, pr for putting that together. And I, I do realize you have a lot of questions, so I'm just gonna make this kind of short. I could tell by the, all the eyes over there <laughs> that we have quite a few questions today. So the other thing I just wanted to talk about was some of the staff that we have. You know, we have two new producers. They've just joined us in the last six months. Very talented young men. You also have some guys like myself who have been here for quite some time. But we're able to form as a team and really put together really good content and really good programming for Village Television. We encourage you to watch Village Television, not just for your board meetings, which are very important, but you know, we're bringing you other programming, Discovering Laguna Woods Village, the Right Now Show. We're bringing you different kinds of programs that I think you'll find interesting. Hopefully when you're flipping through the dial, hopefully in HD on 406, You'll stay tuned and watch some of our programming. So if you have any questions regarding Village Television, we'll be glad to take them, but I can tell already we have a lot of questions regarding internet, broadband, set-top boxes, so I'm gonna cut it short. But if you have questions regarding Village Television, always welcome for your phone calls and emails, and I'll be glad to take questions afterwards as well. Thanks so much. Thank you. 
Yeah. 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 I think we got one more slide, Paul. One more slide? Yeah, we got, oh, the, yeah. yeah, I forgot about this one. So this is the new set, and this actually was taken just a couple of hours ago. So we've been working in the background. If you've ever been up to our studio, it's, it's smaller than this room. So we're building this, <laughs> we're actually produced a show this afternoon. So we have people on the set producing a show as if it's live, and Connie and some other guys are in a corner painting those little bricks. Yeah. <laughs> So we just don't have a lot of room for storage or to, you know, prep sets or things like that. But you can tell the set's much different if you watched any of our programming in the last year, if you watched any of our program in the last three years, and as, for as long as I've been here, the last 20 years, this is dramatically different than anything we've ever presented to you. So uh, you'll see more improvements like that. That's part of the HD conversion task that we were uh, asked to do. And we do thank the residents who are part of the HD conversion task force they not only brought you HD cameras at the studio, in the clubhouses, and now we're building the sets for HD as well. So we, uh, we do appreciate all of the hard work that the staff and the residents with the task force and media and communications put together to bring this effort to you. Right. Awesome. Also, there's actually a couple different looks that we have. Right now, we're calling this is our news desk, right? This is a one-on-one -on -one or maybe a three-person interview. But we also have the Oprah Winfrey couch, right? This, the traditional one where you can kind of kick back in the couch and get your head shrunk by the interviewer, and it's all good to go, right? So I think that's, uh, with, that, with that being said, we're going to wrap this up, open it up for questions and answer. We know everybody has tons of questions, and I'm more than happy to try to answer them as best I can. Yeah, any, anywhere. Yeah. Okay. And we'll tag team it, Paul. We'll just go up here. First of all, where do I get a thing to leave it? But main question is you showed a program for, H, for TV, VTV. Where do you get those? They're located all in the clubhouses, also on the buses. Good They're one. located here in the community center. They're, go ahead, one more time. We'd love to see you. Come on up to the third floor in the community center, and we have stacks of but they are located everywhere. And is this going to be on TV for somebody who couldn't come yes, and be it is. here? There's going to be a replay of this. I don't have the dates with me right now. And then once we replay it, everything will go, well, that's not right. Okay. Right. Uh, well, the, the correct answer so is, we'll, is the TV we'll guide is on the website. You can download it at any time. Go to LagunaWoodsVillage.com, media services, and you'll find it. Hi, two questions. Um, Channel 6, buying and selling stuff. Will there be an abil ability to upload and post stuff from the website instead of physically coming to your offices? You're talking about the Trading Post? Yes. One of the most popular shows on television. Been on uh, TV for I'm, over I'm not years. doubting it. <laughs> right. Yes, we do have a form that you can fill out online, and then you can actually now upload what we hope. Yep. Right now, you're just emailing us. Right. But if you have a digital photo, we will now include that with our broadcast. And that's something we just started about three months ago. Okay. So if you email us your digital photo, we'll be sure to include it with your app, which is free of charge to our residents. I have to add some additional. We have a new trading post page where you can actually um, fill out all your information online, attach the photo, and it'll come into an inbox for his team to be able to put up line. So you don't need to come down any longer. Good. Um, another no, part of like it, the, we have about 200 plus clubs in the village. Each one of them has to manage it individually. Chuck, I think it's for you. Why don't we have a way to do it centrally for registering, maintenance, uh, collections of dues, scheduling, courses? Because uh, Laguna Woods Village, although they support the clubs and they register, the clubs, the, the, the responsibility to manage those clubs are on the club president. So whatever system that you design to manage those, that's, that's up to the club members. However, we have created a really great club page for you for the information for folks out there that, oh, gosh, there's so much to show you. I've, we got to explore that new website. We have some really inter interesting information about all the different clubs, the different categories of clubs. But as far as taking payments and transactions and uh, registering guests, we're going to leave that up to the club, pr club presidents. There's not enough staff to do it. There's 260 clubs yeah. and thousands of residents. There's a way to automate use automation systems. Yep. So my question has to do with, um, I'm here, <laughs> um, searching. It looks like the website is great, I'm, and it's got a ton of information, and also the e-governance, that's really great. Mm -hmm. And uh, But is there a way at a high level to perform a search 
without having to navigate through everything. For example, if I just want to know what are the fitness center hours or when is the bulky item pickup? Okay, let's, is, we'll, we'll, we'll have to test that out. I can't really tell you now, but we have a couple different types of search engines that we have here. One, we have the search engine that search is all of the content of the entire website here. Let's go, uh, let's see, fitness center hours. Let's find out. Fitness center. Oops, made a typo. We'll search the other tag free. Let's see if we can find anything out here, fitness centers. Let's see, plenty of fitness centers. What do we got here? Oh, I think we might be able to find the hours here. It's down below. Right, there we go. <laughs> fitness hours, I think we lucked out, we found it. <laughs> so, also, another, another item is on the, on the residence page, which you didn't see yet. Um, we have the governance side of the house. Is right now we know it's a big challenge for the folks out there looking who want to look at uh, agendas and minutes and so on and so forth. We have a separate search functionality for you to search resolutions as well as search uh, uh, search agendas, minutes, and resolutions. So if you was up in here and you wanted to search for the all the resolutions or all the meeting minutes, you could start here. If you wanted to search for, res for the meeting minutes within a particular year, I can use this. So we have uh, a couple different ways you can search for content. I have two questions. We, she's with the microphone. Okay. Um, when we first moved in here, the um, phones and uh, getting your internet was iffy, so we went with ATT UVerse. Mm -hmm. Will Village provide a better service than they are? Well, that's ATT. Because we're not happy with them. <laughs> ATT is a multi billion dollar organization. I don't know if we're going to be able to compete with ATT. <laughs> but I think we're, but you know what? I think we're going we're gonna to be able to do pretty good. Well, I'm having trouble getting bars on my phone. Oh, oh you're talking about cell phone service. Cell phone service. Oh, yeah. Well. Let's talk about cell phone service. GRF does not control the cell phone service, it's independent carriers, ATT, Verizon. But good news. Um, there's been some discussion about putting additional towers uh, in different various locations. The last tower that we tried putting, last year we tried putting together uh, with Verizon was at the, for the service yard, you know, the maintenance yard up there, uh, but they wind up declining to uh, put a cell phone spot there. Uh, the last discussion I had with them, they're gonna send out a site engineer, they're gonna do a site survey, find out where our weak points are at, and see if they can identify where they can put a cell phone tower. But that's completely up to them. There is there there was some discussion about putting a additional cell phone tower on the radio tower behind gate 14, but it's two miles of fiber optic cabling somebody's got to pay for to be able to get trench up there. So the point is, who's going to pay for it? Is it Verizon going to pay for it, or is GRF going to pay for it? Okay. So it's got to make practical sense for for these carriers. The second question is: a lot of the clubs are being told, I believe, that they have to use a Facebook site now. We won't have mm -hmm. club sites. Will we be able mm -hmm. to access that, or will people actually have to go to Facebook to find out about a club? What we want is for the clubs to be able to choose what they want for their website. They can use Facebook, they can use Wix, they can use Bluehost, they can use whatever website engine they like. But it won't be on this site. But it will not be on this site. The, the challenge with that is there's a lot of times people post uh, news and information on these club pages that are not accurate, that we're not responsible for. So we want the club pages to be independent from uh, uh, from the actual village website for liability purposes. Yeah, I got a question. Um, I uh, I watched Channel 66, which is the low definition movies with the uncut and um, and the full length. And the only way you find out about that is on Channel 3, which if you don't catch it right, you have to sit through five more minutes mm -hmm. before it scrolls through to tell you what it's playing. Right. It's, is that uh, going to be changed in any ways? The only way is right now, it depends on what's the level of service. The level of service that you get that's part of your assessment does not include a digital TV guide. However, for a small fee of $4.95 a month, we can provide you with a uh, digital converter where you actually have an interactive television guide where you can search, scroll, and be able to find that information. But as far as the service level that you're getting with your assessments, there is only that channel three uh, scrolling guide. Now we have uh, on channels for uh, for TV6, Village Television, or now we're, we're publishing a seven day a week uh, TV guide for that channel online, yeah. so you can see that. He's, talk he's talking about the Stars Encore channel. That's, oh, that's why. Oh, yeah, yeah. The program guide, the interact interactive program guide with the set top boxes would get you where you want to be. The, you mentioned <clears throat> you mentioned Whole House DVR. 
but you did not cover it. Would you do that, please? I can take, take, I can take sure. that one. Yeah, I'll do mine. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. So it's called Whole Home DVR. It's a service that Cox and Time Warner and uh, the, the large tier one level uh, company has been, been uh, offering for a couple years now. Essentially what it is, is we're uh, partnering up with TiVo and NCTC, that's, our, that's the uh, independent cable operator co-op, and uh, bringing in what they call a whole home DVR appliance or service. This is like a, a DVR that has six tuners on it where you can simultaneously record six different television shows at a time, and then you can uh, re-watch those programs that you recorded in any room in your whole house. Uh, any room in your house, right? So I can be in the bedroom watching one TV, walk out to the living room, push it over here, and I can watch it over here, you know, seamlessly. Or I can watch them all at the same time. So it's <laughs> so so. What's really important about that technology is there's a, a, attached to that with a TiVo is a, a another Emmy award-winning new type of television guide. Essentially, what it is, this appliance that you have, it has all your apps baked into it. it has Hulu, Netflix, Amazon and our regular t cable TV uh, programming that we have uh, on our network. So if I, instead of me trying to flip through channels all the time, all I really need to do is type in Game of Thrones, and it gives me every single option I have. It'll check Hulu, it'll check Netflix, it'll check YouTube, it'll check whatever I program it to. So instead of me flipping around for hours trying to find out what I want, I do sports show, and then it says, oh, can I find it? So instead of you wasting all this time uh, flipping through the channels, you can go right to what you want. And it's really cool, some of the new technology, the next version coming out is, now you won't even have to type anything. You just pick up your remote control, turn around, Game of Thrones, and it'll just pop up on your TV. Mm -hmm. So that's the type of technology that's coming with whole It media. also has a Netflix button. Yeah, Netflix itself. button. So you just hit Netflix, and if you're a Netflix subscriber, it'll just bring up your Netflix uh, content. Uh, wait, uh, we're looking at second quarter next year. Right now we got a lot of, a lot of heavy lifting going on. The question was, when is the service going to be uh, offered? What we're trying to do right now, in order for us to do that, we've got to be able to get rid of the analog channels. We have 51 analog channels that are on here, that are on network, and it takes, for every uh, one digital channel, or every 14, it takes what? Uh, six analog. Yeah, like six analog channels for every one digital. So we need to clear the space, increase the transmission capacity, so we can start offering over-the-top services whole home DVR, but we, right now we're a hybrid solution. We're doing half analog and half digital. We need to go to an all digital solution so we can start offering these modernized services. And that was part of the uh, mention that Chuck had that in September we'll have a vendor come out to take a look at the plant. And that's one of the preparations that we'll be doing. The infrastructure needs to be there before we can actually deploy these appliances to your home because you want it to work. Okay. Uh, before I get to my question, I'd just like on behalf of the entire room to thank you for a, an organized and informative presentation. You answered a lot of questions. Um, my question is, uh, for years I've been asking about this, uh, some of us pay premiums to get services like HBO, but we can't get HBO Go. HBO Go. Right. Um, secondly, there are some, some program services that, he's shaking his head, doesn't want to answer that one. Um, Second, there are other uh, program choices that come up on uh, the uh, scroll on the program, uh, the, like uh, Epics, and we're seeing promotions for some of these channels that we can't get. How do we go about getting access to some of these that we'd like to get entertained by? Well, that's part of the, I want to call it a rebuild again, you know, because we're having to upgrade the plant. But part of that is really your cost. If we launch TV everywhere, and that's really what you're talking about. HBO to go, ESPN to go, any of those other to goes that you can watch on your home device. We're not even in your home, you're gonna watch it somewhere else because if you're at home, you'd watch it on your set. Very expensive uh, proposition. The unfortunate thing about TV everywhere is that if you want to watch ABC, for example, in Wisconsin on this network, Everyone gets charged for it. There's a subscriber fee for it. So unfortunately, it's not a per subscriber fee. It'd be a lot easier that way, but they would never get their money back. So what they do is they charge everyone. So even though someone might not even have a device or even watch ABC, they would be paying the monthly fee. So that's a very tough question for us to kind of resolve right now. I have, a, I have some workarounds, Paul. What I do for my HBO Go is I'm an Amazon Prime user. And with that, I can get HBO Go there. So that's how I get around my issue at home. Yeah. Well, one of, the, uh, one of the difficulties of governance is that it's morphed to the 
elected to give the citizens a menu of choices on what to be interested in. And uh, is there a way to increase the power of the notices on the, uh, on the board meetings that you had, you're interested in, some way to ask us what we want you guys to work on? Well, that was one of my questions. I was really uh, pleasantly surprised that you all were here. So I'm curious as to how you knew that this town hall was going to take place. Is it through the e-blast? Is it through village television? Is it through the newspaper? And I think that's what's happening more of it as far as Brad's vision is the e-blast of really reaching out to the community and getting a systematic way to do that. Continuing uh, repetition way to find out what we want rather than have picked from a menu of items of what you guys present to us. What? Are you talking about programming? The e-blast is a uh, the newsletter that the community puts the, the community puts together, they need to have your email address, and I believe it's each Friday afternoon. They will send you an e-blast, and it's a, it's a, an electronic newsletter, and it'll give you a synopsis as to meetings and events that are happening in the community in the next week or so. Right. Right. So here's here's what we got going. Late earlier this la uh, earlier this year, late last year, there were some surveys that were sent out. We got to do a little bit more surveying of the people, of the folks out there, and what they right. want to watch. Right. Not just what we want to see on the programming on uh, Village Television, but also the other pro what other kind of channels that you want. This to me, this is your network. We want to listen to you. I what I'd like for people to do, if you have an interest, is find out when the media communication uh, meeting is and talk and come in and, and, and express your opinion. Right. Can we take that and extend it to the landscaping and the yeah. Well, we're going to get on to this. Yeah. Right. 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 There's on the website. There is a suggestion box. Right. We can actually. Well, I understand that. Right. I'm talking about some kind of continuing process to find out what future sense did a survey of the community some right. months back said right. that there's no systematic way that the board members can find right. out what the residents want. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Where's right. the mic? I, I'll be interested in, in learning what, what your suggestions are. Okay. I got a question. Are there any plans to support any kind of media streaming devices like the Apple TV or Roku? I already have one connected right now, yeah. and, it, and it works, but you, you, miss, you lose functionality. Right. If you're yeah. like a Comcast subscriber, there's an ABC app, there's an NBC app, there's sports apps like ESPN, right. but you have to have a a code to key in from right. and log on to your digital subscriber. Yeah. And That's we don't exactly have that. what we were talking about. That's called authentication. Yeah. And the cable operator usually provides you with that information right. and then you put it on your app, your username and password. But again, if we launch that service, everyone in the community is going to pay to let for you to watch ABC on your tablet. And that's and, and that's something if more and more of you choose then that's something that needs to go to the Media and Communications Committee. You need to voice that this is right. an app that you want available to you. We, the staff would have to ter you know, determine the cost and present that to the committee, mm -hmm. which would then be approved by the Golden Rain Foundation. Right. Yeah, yeah, here, yeah, here's a challenge, though. So to be able to put that infrastructure in place, they don't charge you just individually. They Several. charge the community collectively yeah. as a whole. So yeah. there's no additional fee. So it's quite pricey. Well, I mean, it, it seems like it's more of the actual cable company Providing a logon, like if I'm a, I was a right. Comcast customer, I log yep. on as a Comcast That's customer. Right. I need to put in this verification code right. that says right. I really get the ESPN channel. Right. So now I can use this app and get the extra advantages of the ESPN channel. I totally agree, but Comcast is paying that for you. Oh, okay. here we're independent, independent operator. operator. Yeah, yeah. We, independent operator. We all have to pay that collectively together to bring those services to the community. But check this out with the whole home DVR solution that we're putting together with TiVo. You'll be, it will have an app so you can watch TV on your smartphone and on, on your tablet only within your own home. In the next couple of versions, they're working on license agreements with all the programmers, so you'll be able to have that app and you'll be able to go on the road and watch that. But it's going to be through the whole home, uh, T, uh, the TiVo whole home DVR app that, uh, uh, services that we're going to be offering. But nothing, no, no magic bullet. No magic bullet. Hi. Hold on. We have a microphone back here. So, well, you're going to have to wait. Yeah. Yes, sir. Because the audience at home can't hear you. We'll get to you. Okay. I have a uh, set-top box with HD. And my question is, uh, follow-up on what 
somebody was saying before, excuse me, follow up on someone was saying before. Um, the programming um, TV guide, is it possible maybe in the future to uh, have uh, like online be able to access an entire guide 24 seven for whatever's broadcast on all channels? I, I know in the Orange County Register, Orange County Register, it's not always right. accurate as what's on right. our TVs. Right. What I'd like for you to be able to, if you uh, subscribe to a set-top, if you have that set-top box, and they have the, if you have uh, the HD uh, DVR. I have Channel 3. You but, have, uh, but no, but there's actually a, a guide on there. Right. You should be, and, you, and you can actually look at all the programming that you want on there. I have the guide on Channel 3, but... No, uh, no not Channel 3. I'm talking about there's a digital guide on your remote control that you're able to see. If you have a box. Okay. Yeah, come down to, come down to Window 9, and then it'll show you how, where the, how to pick, pull up that digital guide. All right, thank you. Yep. Let's let's get this lady right here. 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 I'm I'm good. I already had my question. Oh, thank you. You finally found me. Okay, my question is really simple. On the new website on the new websites, are you going to have the same information like an E edition of the globe? The paper is yellowing. No, you you just I cannot see it anymore. You would go to the Orange County Register and go to the Laguna Woods of uh, version, right? I'm an excellent researcher. Okay. I spend six hours trying everything. Okay. And then I call them. So you want to see if the globe will be online? Well, it's, it's not I can under the see cities, it. The cities it's, tab. Uh, I, it I was under the cities tab, and then you hit cities, and it'll bring down the South County cities. And Laguna Woods was one of the. Right, areas. but not the clubs, mm -hmm. and not the meetings, mm -hmm. oh. and not the trip notes. Mm -hmm. And I cannot see that one. It's that, a very small print, mm -hmm. and the paper is yellowing, or right. at least it's in very. Mm -hmm. It's a very small font for right. my eyes. Well, we're working. We, we are working with the recreation department. They have a, a news channel on the new website. Mm -hmm. Well, they're going to be putting all the most important recreation news that's up there. I can't say they're putting everything, but the recreation news is definitely going to be put online. Right. We're not the new globe. I'm talking about I'm talking about our clubs and classes. Hey. Laguna Woods Village. Oh. Which the globe's not ours. So can we post the trip notes then on our side? Trip notes? Trip. Like, when the clubs go on trips. Yeah. yeah. No. no. Right. right. Normally that happens on the the club's web page. They post information on their club web page. If there is a uh, uh, any type of events that's going on at the Performing Arts Center or uh, different things going on. The Recreation Department will put those on the website itself. I can't say they're going to put every single thing in, but some of the most the popular items they will. You know. Okay, since I don't see access to any of the Go channels uh, in the near future, what about on demand? Is that going to work? We can. I think, well, again, it's all about cost. How much we, we'll, what we need to do is work with the media communication with the GRF board to figure out, okay, we know the clientele want, our customers want this service. What price tag are we willing to pay to be able to offer those services? Here's what I'm thinking, what I'm hoping we'll be able to do. Once we go to a, like a whole home DVR solution, that, uh, that appliance will have all the particular apps that you can think of, Hulu, Netflix, uh, Amazon, and then you'll be able to do on-demand response to those particular apps. Otherwise, if we had to do on-demand response here, we have a bank of servers with all these movies, that's a, the overhead and cost to be able to uh, provide that to you. Is, is pretty substantial. Now, I'm not the one that's saying no, but I'm saying that we need to work with the, with the committees and put a price tag on it to figure out if they're willing to pay for it. That's, that's really what it's all about, the price tag. Why do we not have cable? Oh, uh, this, uh, the, the fiber optic, because at one time or another, this, this uh, cable plant was sold off to Conexin, uh, they're a national carrier, but they went bankrupt, so the Golden Rain Foundation bought this cable plant back, this cable infrastructure. You own all the fiber optics, the cable plant, the head end, the fiber optics, the lasers, the nodes, the pedestal, is all owned by the community. You were once the largest cable operator probably in the world. Because yeah. back then, Ross Cortez, he direct buried coaxial cable and built a mass antenna in 1963 about, because he didn't want antennas on his home. It is one of the most valuable assets you own. Mm -hmm. right. Everyone can use cable television. And security, right? So I think the cable pro, uh, cable operation in your cable plant is the most valuable thing you could own. You don't right. want to be a part of Cox Communications. I brought my bill. I'm happy to show it to you guys. It's <laughs> it's not nearly twenty five dollars. 
<laughs> yeah, that's what it is. The, the, for the cable to basic television here, it's $25. Basic television, if we brought, sold the network to Cox, then you get to pay Cox prices. So keeping it in-house, we're able to keep the cost, uh, su su suppress those costs. $20, $25 for basic cable is pretty, pretty reasonable. Yeah. Right. right. You have choices as well. We have we have premium packages here. You get HBO Cinema. Yeah. Like, great. Excellent. Outstanding. Given the, I accept the fact that uh, we have to pay for everybody. For example, let's say I wanted Italian television, and I do. Uh, we presently have available to us on channel 244 something that Berlusconi. Uh, Berlusconi, but that's a piece of crap. So what I'd like is for you all to uh, invest in uh, RAI, which is the normal Italian television. Now, if we're presently paying for Italian television, which is not good on 244, is there some way I can get to you all to say, don't do that anymore, that's, a, that's not good, that no one is watching that. But uh, several people, probably two out of 18,000, would right. watch RAI, my wife and I. Okay. So if you could do that, I'd be very grateful. We'll look into that, for sure. You got the right guy. Okay. I, I belong to them. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, you can recycle it, yeah. You can recycle Right, yeah, that's fine. And my master bedroom, I have no coaxial 75 ohm outlet. So to get around that, I went to my Luke Work uh, Slingbox 500 wireless, paid $15 for the app on my iPhone so I can watch cable on my Apple Watch. Now, I have two, three, I, got, I went down to City Hall and, they, and I picked up two free uh, TVO uh, DVRs. If I get the $100 card, will you maintain my service? No. <laughs> hey, that's pretty ingenious, though, right? Here he said he went and got a sling box and he was going to uh, hook it up to his local cable TV network. Now he can go to their website and watch TV here on our network, right? But it's not, it's not the Go channels, though. It's, it's a workaround. Yeah, anywhere you have internet, correct. Hi, this is a really back to basics kind of question. I want to know if uh, what are you going to do to improve the engineering for consistency of the sound volume and the quality across your ad feeds, local programming, and cable TV programming? Cox solved this about five or six years ago. Yeah. What's going on with us? Well, I can address some of the commercials that you might see on cable networks. Um, we do control those advertising advertisements so if it's a local commercial and you feel it's loud then we do adjust it through our, our software and the only problem we have is it sometimes will be loud on one network and not another and we also found out that if you use the set-top box there's different modulation uh, schemes to them and then you can adjust it through your audio settings we had a resident calling us telling us that his TV was really loud and our commercials were loud and and we found out that he had a new TV and it was wired in properly. And it took quite a few calls and a technician to go out there and find it out, but it looked like, I want to say Best Buy. <laughs> I did. It goes really loud and really low. The next one is really low. Right, and, and, I mean. and when, does that, when that does happen, just call us and yeah, we will we narrow it down. The biggest help that we mm -hmm. can get from you is to say, I just saw this commercial on CNN at 8, 12 a.m. We can go back to that file, and we have software that can go back and tell us what audio levels it played at and get it where it needs to be. And I have Cox Communications, and I still experience very loud commercials, and they cut in and out, and I'll see the, the national spot at times as well. Chuck and I were just at a conference in Indianapolis. I don't even know who the cable provider is over there, but whether you're watching ESPN, ABC, CNN, it happens throughout the country. So our stance is, let us know. We'll take care of it. We don't want to annoy you. That's the last thing we want to do. Can't you preview those things? We preview them, and we set them at a, our decibel level that is required by federal law now. And so you know, just 
It's quality control, and if there's something that sneaks out for whatever reason or plays differently for a different network, which is, we find it odd. It's the same digital file, but on CNN, it'll be fine. And then on Lifetime, it might be a little bit louder. And th that's technology right now. Uh, real quick, I first I'd like to thank you what you did to Channel 406. It really made a big difference because I never watched it before, and now I turn it on. And, uh, thank you. Well, that, thank you. And, and you know, was, it's really yeah. it's entertaining. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and it's nice to look at. Yeah. Right. And that Thrive Show was real interesting. They're very good. Right. Yes. Yeah, that's one thing about it is we're not done yet either. We're working really hard with the Media Communication Committee. We're working hard with our, our advisors. We're looking at all different types of strategy to bring interesting content. No, it's and, good. Yeah. Compared and to, to bring it to it you, it really so. is. We're, just, and, we're going to make it even better. And the next thing you were talking about, the TV program you get at the clubhouses. And you can also, on your control, your TV control, when you hit guide, just hit guide again. And it lists every show for the week, the two weeks. And you can, and I went through that, and I, I recorded the movies that were coming on. And right. it's, it's a simple way to... To see what's on any of the channels. Do it twice. Yeah, you hit it twice. And you on any TV station, you can go through. I do that on the, what do you call it, the Hallmark Channel. <laughs> and I go and record all the movies. Oh, cool. Thank you very Thank much. You. When you <clears throat> introduce the whole home DVR, will you be able to? Get rid of the 6.1, 6.2, 6.3. Will you renumber the whole system? Your set top box will basically just pick up 406. So if you do have the set top box, you'll be seeing it on 406. The people that are seeing 6.1 are connecting one of these newer smart TVs to the system, and that's basically a sub channel or the points. But if you were to get a whole, whole home DVR, you would just pick us up on 406. My understanding is that we have fiber optic to the pedestal. Does each manor have to be totally fiber optic? No, there's no, there's no fiber to the, to the home. It's all coax cable. I, I understand oh. that. But does it have to be fiber optic to have no modems? Because I understand that with fiber optic, it does not require modem. Yeah, you'll still need a, a, some type of cable modem to, get fiber, to terminate that. To, to, Terminate that with fiber. Mm. Yeah. Even even with the folks who have um, a Verizon, oh, what's their service called? Well, I've, I've heard. You still have appliance in the home. Yeah. yeah. In another city that I have another house, mm -hmm. they said it does not require a modem with mm -hmm. fiber optic. Mm -hmm. That was a question we asked to our vendor in, in Indianapolis. We asked, how many operators are bringing fiber to the home? And it's very few. And I said, you guys have a cost basis per home? And he said, about $1,500 per home to take it fiber to the home. And what benefit does it really give you? It's not really visible by the average consumer at this point. But it's, it's pricey if you multiply 12736 to $1,500. It's going to right. Because here's it's why, in regards right. to the fiber, let's say you have fiber coming into your home. How do you hook it up to your TV? You have to have some kind of appliance on there to hook an HDMI cable up to it, right? Yeah. So the fiber goes into the back of the appliance, and from the back of the appliance, you have an HDMI cable that goes to the back of the TV. So there's definitely a, there you have to have an appliance. Something. Yeah, you don't hook fiber directly into the back of the TV. I have a, a couple of questions. Uh, I think one of them has been answered already, but the 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 wiring that's actually within the home itself mm -hmm. um, has a certain bandwidth, and is that going to be enough to support? these, these uh, super uh, modems, et cetera, or, or is it gonna be on a case-by-case -case basis replacing? I think as the technicians get out to the home, and start <clears throat> doing some work out there, it, and that's really where the problem areas lie. Right. It's within the home. So if someone has not had a technician or done an upgrade to their home or had an extension put in, they probably have old RG59 cable, which doesn't have the frequency bandwidth that new technology is requiring. I, they're using RG6 now. So I think that's going to be a case-by-case -case basis. And I think what's going to happen is someone's going to get one of these whole home DVRs and they realize it doesn't work. But during that install process is when technicians can go, okay, we need to change the cabling within the home. 
Right. And then that's when that process will happen and the upgrade will happen. So that's I, a, I can a, add some additional details so that's to a that. Call, that's a phone call then. Yeah, for, well, for well here's how we're going to be able to tell. Right now, if you have, uh, you know, there's multiple layers of cable that's in those buildings. If the community's 50 years old, the old RJ59 cable, it's black. The new cable, if you have cable, uh, if it's the white cable coming out of the wall, you have the new RG6 cable, it's more than capable than uh, running 100 megabit speeds. Here's the really good test. If you can run 100, meg 100 megabit on your, uh, on your internet speeds for your PC, you're gonna be fine. What we're, we're, we're talking about, uh, the manufacturer's telling us you need at least 15 megabyte down speeds for the whole home DVR, so we're well, well within that. That'll be a requirement. Before you to be able to get the whole home DVR, you're gonna to need to step up to a higher tier service from the basic. And that's a 500 gig, two terabit, could up to two terabit hard drive for those new uh, DVR. For you techies. Yeah. My, my second question has to do with the programming. And, and uh, there's been a number of questions about programming and, and what's offered and what could be offered, et cetera. Uh, to my knowledge, and I've been associated with, uh, with the village for over, over six, almost 10 years, um, there hasn't been any request for input of, mm -hmm. I mean, you could, you could easily take and put, put one to 100 and say, number, number which, which channels you'd like to see, and then at some point tabulate those. And and work work your programming around that. Yeah. Well, that's media and communications, and they're meeting on Monday, August twenty first. We always uh, well, they were meeting on the second Monday of every month. And now they're meeting every other month, but they are meeting on the twenty first. And media and communications is a committee that determines what's on your cable network. They will listen to input. We've had many requests to add the Pac twelve network for years, and we wrote a staff report, and that will be presented. So if the residents have a particular network that isn't available currently, they're your committee yeah, to give them input. But that, 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 this is important. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm voting for people, complete democracy. Mm -hmm. so go, go throughout, the, throughout the village. A lot, a lot of the programs are also bundled. bundled. So contractually, if you show one, you're probably going to show eight or nine. When you crunch the numbers, you can Right. I like I like the idea. I mean, you, obviously, going in. I'm sorry, going in and find, listing one through hundred. You're, you're talking about not a channel. You're talking about CNN, Lifetime, History. Did it? Right. We didn't tabulate that. We'd have to do it electronically. If you're doing it by paper, it's too. Yeah. But sending out a survey like that, I think it'd be a great idea. Okay. Yeah. And when you, and if they're bundled, like I said, when you crunch the numbers. Right. And our advertisers would love to know what channels you're watching. Yes. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Thank you. I, right. Absolutely. Oh, I wouldn't go that far. Let's you know, yeah. not go crazy over here. <laughs> I apologize, you may have covered this. Um, so if, if we have our TV go out every day, we just call. Right. I, I don't think you're working on our area, but uh, just mm. lately it's been working fine, and now it's every day. Right. So, we, we're trying, we're, what we know that the issues that we have is the cabling in the home, so just keep on calling broadband services. If there's an issue with a particular television, we'll get out there as fast as we can. The whole idea is instead of us waiting to do fix individual one channel at a time, it's, it's not a good experience. So we're working with the third party independent cable, uh, cable company. They're gonna come out here and do a diagnostic and inspection of our system, put together a scope of work for us to be able to go out to bid to be able to bring in uh, some heavy hitters to redo all the cabling at all the homes, right? To fix that problem. Yeah. If you know we have the new going seven, out yeah. every day, yeah. you need to call broadband services or you might be having a monitor issue. Power supplies go bad, it just depends. But right. you shouldn't call experience them. that every day. Yeah, no, I, I hear you. Yeah. I have a, a combined question. First of all, the um, 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 schedules that are online of, 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 of the governance um, times and in, in places, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and the, I, I forgot that they're, they're, they're like four different um, 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 calendars online. Mm -hmm. And um, it, I used to be able to um, download the governance one, one to my um, 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 uh, um, calendar, mm -hmm. and I've had trouble lately. Is it, is it just me? <laughs> uh, are you talking about team up? I, I, the, the team up is 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 is, is a new term right. um, um, to me because I, I hadn't used that before. Okay. Well, we have the, the all the governance calendars are on an app. You can actually download an app. It's called Team Up. 
from there, you can actually get access to all the governance calendars, all the backup documentation, everything, and it's downloaded right to your phone. Okay, and and so, so the first thing I have to do is 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 download the app, right? Correct. Yeah, check a okay. look at some of the recent uh, what's up in the villages. There's an article in there on how to get connected to that team up calendar. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. the, the, um, um, the other thing I was was going to suggest from all the people's comments here in wanting to have their their voices. Um, I'm, 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 can we? What are you doing? <laughs> that is. Okay, that, um, that um, can you put something on the internet, Chuck, mm -hmm. that would um, 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 enable, um, say I've got a, a question or comment about the transportation meeting, mm -hmm. and because I can't be there. Yes. So can I, if, if, if you could put something on, on, on the internet, mm -hmm. and then th th that would automatically be transferred to the, the transportation committee. So it, say I've got a suggestion, I want to mm -hmm. go ABC, whatever it right. is. And yeah, I'm glad you asked that because we have that technology with our, our Granica solution, the e-government transparency. Right now we're just getting the boards up to speed utilizing that technology, getting formed. Good. But eventually we'll have the committees on there. So you'll be able to see the agenda before the meeting and do your e-comment. So the board members would be notified of your question. Okay, it wouldn't it, necessarily go to transportation, but it would at least go to the transportation committee. But 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 but, but couldn't you do the same thing with with Paul and and and, and the various channels and and, and you know I, sure. I I like I I want this channel versus sure. that channel. Sure, we could definitely do an uh, like an online survey or sur send out like a survey monkey they call them you know with all these different various questions. It wouldn't be through TV to the television station, but it'd be through a third party software tool. That's fine. It's, it's, yeah. it's, 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 as long as, as, as Paul gets the information. And I want to congratulate both of you. You have done a really marvelous job. And I watch you c quite often on a daily basis Thank for f f five to six hours. So I, I Don't know worry, good, we'll break something. The, the goods and bads. Don't worry. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. All right. Let's get a wrap up a few more questions here. Uh, yes, I was in the auxiliary area. Um, like this? Okay. About a year ago, our cable went out, and it cost me $50 for them to come out and assess it, and $200 for a new modem. And is that going to be uh, happening once this big company comes and assesses everything? Well, no. We're, right now, there's no there's no charges. We're talking about charging the homeowners for anything. This is this is an independent audit of our infrastructure here. Now, the cable the cable the inside the manor in your home is definitely owned by the resident. So, if there's a massive if there's a major wiring rewiring or something that needs to be replaced, the resident is responsible for that for sure. Even the modem. Even the modem. Correct. You own. You talk about the set top box for your TV or your internet. Uh, TV. Yeah, TV. The set top box. Yeah. Set top box. Yeah, no, those are uh, the set-top box. Those are usually, you don't pay for those. It's a monthly it's a subscription rental. fee. <laughs> it's yeah. monthly for, uh, subscription fee, mm -hmm. but it cost them $50 to come out and assess that yes. the cable was bad, and then they charged just $200 on top of that for a new modem. Yeah, I'd have to take a look. I at don't that. want to go through all of these charges. No, when we don't want to charge you either. Changing. Yeah, we don't want to charge you either. I mean, we want to make sure that everything's working appropriately. But there is some responsibilities for the homeowner, right? If you have something, if there's a problem with some of the cabling or with the modem that you own, then it's your responsibility to replace it. I'm in the co-op. Okay, mm -hmm. still, even with that, you still own it. It's your property, you know. We have one more. Or is that the last question? Up front. Then? Up front. Can we get our front right here? We'll get your uh, mic first. I don't need a mic. Well, we, TV well we, the TV oh. guys do. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, are the new modems going for, uh, what I'm talking about is Wi-Fi. Yes. Are the new modems that you were talking about, I missed the first okay, no problem. 15 minutes. So okay, no worries. I'll ask you more personally. Sure, sure. Are they going to fix the problem that I have that the upload and download speeds are very variable by 10 times from where my modem is to where my modem ain't. Yeah, you're talking about your wireless connection? Yeah. The wireless connection, is a, that's an appliance that you own, right? So what we're guaranteeing, anyway, guaranteeing is the bandwidth to your home. Whatever Wi-Fi solution you have, I can't really control that. If you have a room that's on the first floor, and your modem's in the first floor in the kitchen and your bedroom's upstairs on the other side of the house, I really can't control. There's no upstairs. Right. It's okay. all flat. Right. 
And the front of the place where the modem is right. is fine. Right. The back of the place right. is the router. Yeah, it's Wi-Fi. You're talking about Wi-Fi signal. Yeah, I'm talking yeah. about Wi-Fi. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's uh, it, it's definitely challenging. It depends on if there's a wall in the way. It depends on if there's any electronic interference. It's wireless signal, right? So we know your internet connection is good because if you get close to that Wi-Fi, it's working fine. But when you're in your it's back never, bedroom, it's never working right. fine. We're we're, it's we're working, working we're definitely. We're working on that diligently to fix that up for you. Have, do you know what? Or do you have one of the top level? Uh, what service level do you have? The entry level, or are you for paying my a home? Wi-Fi? Yeah, no, no, for your cable internet. Inter internet access at home. I think it's probably basic. Yeah, basic one. Well, we're just going to triple the speeds. It was at five megabytes down and one up. We just recently tripled. we uh, tripled that to fifteen down and two up. But it depends on what type of modem you have. If you have a modem that's over three years old, West Coast Internet is going to replace it for you, at no cost. I've only been here a year, so it's less than a year. And yeah, it should be unfortunately, fine. Unfortunately, it's not a West Western motive. It was right. set up by a company for me. Right, but we, we, I know it's really challenging some of the, the way that some of the walls are set up and the way the lighting is, the way the copper in the ceiling. Sometimes it interferes with Wi-Fi signal. You could actually put a, a Wi-Fi repeater in your bedroom and you get a better signal. What about, some, have, what about something like Aero? Uh, it's a brand name. Yeah, uh, e -E it depends. It depends. It claims really that good. it'll right. make your whole house perfectly fine. Here's what I do at my house because I, I have I have a uh, what do you call it? You just mentioned it. A repeater. An amplifier. A repeater. Uh, amplifier. A repeater. Yeah. I have a repeater okay, halfway to right. my bedroom, mm -hmm. and my bedroom still. I mean, I'll right. show you the data because okay. I have it. Right. Uh, what I have, I have the same issue at my house. What I have is what they called um, Ethernet over power. It's like a it's like a plug in. I plug it into the wall. An electrical outlet, I plug it into the other electrical outlet, and I run my internet through my electrical outlet at home. So it's called power over ethernet. I ethernet over power. There's different options. I'm sorry, I can't help you right now. Yeah. Last question. Last question, yeah, thank you. Um, sometimes when I go to three, the revolving thing, the numbers don't match with what the program I want. Yeah. Is there a reason? You know, it tells me to go to some program, I go there and it's non-usable service. Yeah, we're using a third-party vendor for that. We do submit our schedule. I th believe it's within three business days. So when some of, especially our programming changes, um, you know, you, there's that three-day period where it's going to be incorrect, and now they load it, and now the, the information is correct. We've experienced that a couple of times this year, um, if that's what you're referring to. Yes. Yeah, and so Unfortunately, the vendor we're utilizing for that, you know, it's not like they're going to turn it around in 24 hours for us. And especially if it is occurring on a Friday, then that information is incorrect and possibly won't be fixed till Tuesday or Wednesday. It's happened twice that I know of. And I wrote a pretty stern email to them three months ago regarding it that we wanted a little quicker reaction to this issue. Yeah, but it's happened. All right, all right, all right, we're wrapping it up. Thank you very much for coming down. We really you. appreciate it. Everybody at home, thank you very much, and we'll see you guys soon. Thank you. Thank you. Can I show you this? Sure. I have an email. I can't stop. I need to talk to Heather, Heather Brass, the general manager's office, is collecting emails. Oh, yeah, you, oh, you stored your results. You saved your results. Yeah.